Hello. This is uh, the lecture corresponding to section 7 and 8 of uh, chapter 30 of uh, Randall Knight's book. In section 7, we're going to learn about induced currents. And the most common application of uh, this type of uh, phenomenon, induction, is uh, the generation of electricity. And the, uh, it is usually done by, well, you know, that um, induction happens when the magnetic field flux changes in value. And that can happen if the magnetic field changes, if the area through a loop uh, changes, or if the angle between the two changes. So in the case of a generator, there is a, a coil inside of these uh, turbines that is moving around in, um, in front of a, a powerful magnet generating electricity. The motion comes, it can come from um, uh, the um, hydroelectric energy, like for instance, uh, water vapor, pressurized wa water vapor pushing uh, the turbine around. And um, specifically, the, the generation happens in the following way. You have a coil inside of a permanent magnet, and the flux is going to be changing, not because the field is changing, not because the area of the coil is changing, but because the angle between the two is changing. So as this moves around, and we need some sort of a power to make it move around, it will be the flux, magnetic flux will be changing, and uh, it will be inducing a, a current through this loop. As explained before, the current will be changing depending on the angle. It could go, will go in one direction or in the opposite direction. And um, that can be taken, uh, the current can be picked up by these uh, slip rings that have uh, the brushes as contact points and will be used uh, in, a, in a circuit. And um, because of that motion, um, the current changing directions, uh, the current is known um, as uh, an alternating current. In terms of uh, voltage, the voltage, the EMF that is being induced, by that uh, motion is going to be positive half of the time and negative half of the time. It's going to be oscillating like this and the magnet that is given by the change of the flux with respect to time and the num number of turns in the loop and here we show only one but you can have many and flux is going to be area times the field this is the number of turns times in this case the change of the angle and um, the, the angle can be now put in terms of uh, the angular uh, velocity and, the, uh, and time as it moves uh, around. Taking the derivative, we get this, which tells you that this is the maximum EMF that is going to be achieved. And this is the way that it will be changing as a function of time. We have an example here. We have a coil. The area is given to square meters. It is rotating in, a, in front of a magnetic field. The magnetic field uh, has uh, 0.01 Teslas. And it is um, moving uh, at a frequency of 60 hertz, 60 times per second. How many turns are needed to generate a peak voltage of 160 volts? So we go back to the expression that we have, and there we don't have to be concerned with the temporal part. We want the maximum value of the, vo of the voltage to be 160, so we go st straight to the maximum value, which is given by the angular frequency, area, field, and the number of turns. So we are given the frequency not in radians but uh, just in turns per uh, hertz per second so we have to put it in turn in radians is going to be given by 2 pi f 
And out of this, we solve for uh, the number of turns, and so it's going to be the maximum EMF that we want, the 160, divided by 2 pi times the frequency, the frequency is 60 hertz, the area which was given and the field which was given. So we need 21 turns. So in such a weak field, if we oscillate, if we turn the coils, uh, uh, the, if the coil has 21 turns and we turn it at 60 times per second, we're going to be generating 160 volts. Another application is um, the transformation of uh, voltages. Basically, um, this device, which is a transformer, inputs a voltage and picks up an, a different voltage. It, this voltage can be larger than this one, or it can be smaller than that one. Since voltage is energy per charge, then you would say, how can we get more energy uh, out of uh, a, a lower energy? Well, you get more energy, but you get uh, less uh, carriers, so the current decreases. So there is a compensation rule between the two. The way that this operates is uh, as follows. We have a loop, and we have an iron core, and we have another loop or coils. Now, this um, is going to be connected to a circuit with a, to an AC source that is going to be driving a current. The current produces a magnetic field. The magnetic field extends all the way around. And since the, the current is AC, the magnetic field is going to be oscillating. It's going to be pointing up half of the time and down half of the time. And as it uh, oscillates, it's going to be oscillating here and changing the flux inside of this second uh, coil. And because of that, it will be inducing another current in this uh, second circuit. So the relationship between the two comes um, through conservation of um, energy and that leads to this expression that says that N1 V2 equals N2 V1 or N2 V2 divided by N2 equals V1 divided by N1. So in any way we can see that um, if N2 is larger than N1, V2 will be larger than V1. So by making this uh, number of turns here larger than the number of turns here, this voltage is going to be larger than that voltage. But um, um, correspondingly, the currents are going to be um, smaller. So we're going to have a kind of a similar expression for the current, but uh, with the N2 over N1 reversed. This is... Uh, 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 transformer. You might have seen those uh, uh, somewhere here in the city. And what uh, they are used for is to, uh, when whenever we have to send electricity long distances, turns out that the losses by resistance on the wire depends um, on the current. So you want to re reduce the current and you can do that by increasing the voltage. So you use uh, what is known as a step-up transformer in which the N2 is much larger than N1 so that the voltage 2 is much larger than the input voltage 1. And uh, this goes up to uh, thousands of volts. Then you transmit with a, a smaller current reducing the losses by resistance. But then when you need to use the electricity you need to bring it down to uh, lower voltage and like for instance at home we we all use 120 volts so for that we need to use a step down transformer in which N2 is much smaller than N1 to bring it down and that brings us uh, the voltage down to 120 and the currents to um, much larger value which is the one we need to operate uh, our devices around 1 amp Another application is uh, metal detectors. You might have seen these of, uh, on Mondays, people on, on uh, at the park checking to metallic objects that might have been lost by people that were uh, having fun in the park uh, on Sunday. I used to do that. Well, the way that this operates is uh, you have a, a, a current that is uh, producing an AC radiation 
in, uh, in inducing a, an AC on a piece of metal that uh, that is picked up by a, another coil. So this one induces a, a current in the in the metal. The metal would be you know a ring, uh, an earring, uh, uh, something, a piece of jewelry, and the um, the feel that this is inducing is received by another coil and that way uh, we can detect metals. I have one in my office in case that you want to come and inspect it. Well, this is one of the questions that you would be answering uh, in your uh, in class with your clicker. I ask you to pause and read it and answer it. And this is uh, the homework that I'm assigning for section seven, problems 22 and 23. We go now to section eight and talk a little bit more about uh, inductors. Um, turns out that um, as you can see, all you need is uh, a current in a loop to have induction, which uh, introduces an effect on every circuit that you can build because every circuit is gonna have a current in a loop and consequently it's going to have induction. Of course, induction happens only when the current is changing or when the, the flux is changing, which of course happens when the current is changing. So whenever you turn a circuit on, or uh, if you have an AC current, then you're going to have induction. And induction means that you're going to have a source or a, dr a sink of um, EMF, of voltage. So it has to be taken into account as a voltage change in Kirchhoff's laws for every circuit. We're going to see some cases here. So an inductor can be any coil, any loop, any ring, and these uh, tend to modify the voltage of, uh, of the, the circuit by storing magnetic field or creating a magnetic field inside of, uh, of the coil or, or the loop. And it, um, to deal with it, uh, math to deal with this effect mathematically, we do the following. Uh, in general, the flux, which is given by the field area and the angle between the two, uh, can be taken as a function of a current. There's always a current that produces a, f a, f a field. So the flux can be taken as, a, as proportional to the current. If the current changes, the field changes, the flux changes, and we, we're going to have an EMF. So that's what we want. Um, the inductance then is, divide, is defined as the ratio of the flux that is being produced and the current that is being used to produce it. So this would be the inductance, the definition of inductance. The units of inductance are going to be the units of flux divided by the units of current, which is Weber's or amps, and these are known as Henry's. Um, uh, inductance is not only a byproduct of uh, the circuit, it can be used as an element of a circuit, and uh, such elements are known as inductors. They can be placed in a circuit uh, with a specific purposes, and uh, when that happens, the inductance is uh, represented in the circuit by this uh, coil. If the inductance happens to be a solenoid, like uh, in most cases is, then um, the, the in, inductance is going to be given by the flux divided by the current. The flux again is uh, the number of turns times the flux, the field times the, the area. Now the field of a, of a solenoid is given by this, which is the number of turns again, the length, and the current. So the two currents go away and we end up with something that is purely geometrical. So it's going to be mu zero, the 4 pi times 10 to negative 7, n squared, the number of turns in the solenoid, the area, which is the cross-sectional area of the solenoid, divided by the length, which is the length of uh, the coil. We notice again that um, 
The, once that we have the inductance, and this is how you would purchase one at uh, Radio Shack or one of those stores, you, you go and buy one of a specific uh, magnitude. What, if you know L, then you can calculate the flux simply by multiplying L times uh, the current. And of course, if you're interested in the in uh, if the if the current is changing and you're interested in the uh, voltage, then the EMF is going to begin by the derivative of that thing Li. And since L is a constant, is not changing, then the EMF will depend on the variation of uh, of the current only. Let us use that to calculate the length of an inductor. We are told that um, the inductor has an inductance of 10 microhenries, and we are told that the diameter of the induct of the inductor, the coil, is 0 0.3 millimeters, and it is um, well tightly wrapping. We're being told that. Um, the wire has a diameter of 0 0.3 millimeters. This is the diameter of the wire. And it is being run around a, a cylinder that has uh, 4 millimeters in diameter. And uh, we are asked what, what length has an inductance of uh, 10 microfibers. Well, solving from the previous expression, sol solving for L, we get this. Except that now N is going to be given by the length of the wire divided by the diameter of uh, or uh, the diameter or half of the twice the radius of uh, of the wire so plugging in the numbers we get uh, this is the diameter of uh, the, of the wire we're putting in terms of the diameter and this is uh, the length, I uh, mean the inductance, and the 4 pi times 7, and then pi, and then the radius square, which is half of this. So this gives you uh, 5.7 centimeters for the length of uh, the inductor. Inductors will change uh, the voltage. Uh, between the two ends of the inductor depending on the di dt depending how much it is changing if the current is steady then this is going to be zero and there is no voltage change as the current goes across but um if the current is changing then it will it will um there's going to be a change of an emf um, given depending on how the current is changing for instance, if the current is increasing, you don't want this the, the induced field to uh, make this increase even more. So you want it in the opposite direction. So if the current is increasing, the potential should be decreasing. In other words, the potential should go from uh, plus to a minus. If the potential is increasing, if the current is decreasing, then you want to, the field to be in the same direction. So you need the, the potential to increase is going to go from minus to a plus. The same um, with a coil, we have a current. If the current is steady, then there's going to be no change. The IDT is zero, and there's uh, no change in voltage between these two ends. But if the current is increasing, then this creates an increasing flux to the left. So the induced uh, field has to go to the right. And for that case, uh, you're going to be decreasing the, the potential. So it's going to go from plus, plus to a minus. As, as, it goes, uh, as the current goes from here to there, it's going to be changing in potential. If we have the opposite situation and the current is decreasing, then you want to move in the same direction, so the induced field is going to be in the same direction as the the, the, the one produced by the current. And uh, since uh, the current is decreasing, the potential will be increasing, so it goes from a minus to a plus. So this would be one of the questions that you would have to answer. 
uh, with your clicker, which current is in, uh, changing more rapidly. <coughs> current one here, current two there. Well, I I suggest that you stop uh, the, the this narration and uh, think about it and answer it. We have um, uh, an example in which we have a current that is passing through an inductor and what potential difference is induced if the current drops to zero in five microseconds. So it is one amp and it's going to go to zero in one microseconds. We know that the EMF is given by minus L di dt, so we need to calculate L is given, it's 10 microhertz, so we need to calculate the di dt, and the di dt is uh, the, the change of the current, which is one, zero final minus initial, zero minus one gives you minus one, and in the time spent, which is five microseconds. So the di dt is minus 2 times 10 to the fifth amperes per second. We use that here and upon calculation we get 2000 volts. So that uh, drop will induce 2000 volts uh, um, across the, the inductor, which is a lot. Another question related to the previous cases that we have seen, what happens as you go from A to B, if the potential of A is larger than the potential of B, does this mean that the, the current is uh, not changing, it's steady? Does this, this mean that the current as it goes from A to B is increasing, or that the current as it goes from A to B is decreasing, and etc. three other cases. We're going to skip um, the subsection of uh, energy in inductors and in magnetic fields that is uh, the next four or five slides that you have in your uh, powerpoint and we're um, we come to the questions to the homework conceptual question number 11 and problems 24 